Hello guys, if you are hired for a new job, what is the quickest way to get going to understand the code base of existing project and start delivering the tasks? In this video, I will give you three tips based on the question here from YouTube comments, question by Leon, which is a pretty typical question for a lot of developers who are just being hired and want to impress their new team with the first results. So I will give you one general tip where you need to start and then two places where you need to look to understand the Laravel project code base on the surface level. So tip number one or mistake number one that is made quite often when the new person is hired, the managers or senior developers give that person the time to just get familiar with the project read the code base, read the documentation, try to install it and stuff like that. But in my opinion, it's not actionable enough. If I'm just reading the code base, I don't know where to look exactly, what to look for. So if there are 100 features in that code base, which features will I work on? So my first tip is ask for specific first simple task then your analysis of the code base would be much more actionable. And of course, aim for something very simple, something like change the text somewhere, add some conditions somewhere, something very simple and trivial, but you could deliver the first task while analyzing the code base. And now how to analyze the code base. So let's take a look at some example. For example, on Laravel Daily in the resources, we have list of open source projects and let's click newest edit. And let's pick something like, oh, Pinkery, great example. Pretty recent, should be great code base by Nuno and the team. So we click here, which leads us to GitHub source. And for example, you're hired to work on Pinkery. Where do you even start looking? Of course, the first thing is to try to install the project locally. But generally, if your goal is to understand the structure of the project, there are two things which describe that structure. The first thing is routes. So even while doing junior code reviews or general code reviews on this channel, I always start with routes. So if we go to routes folder, you should go to routes web or routes API, whatever is the type of project. And then you need to take a look at this. So what are the general routes in that project? From here, you would understand the overview, what the project is about and what features does it have. For simple projects, you may just look through routes web or routes API here, but maybe for more complex projects, the routes are in multiple files, including vendor packages. So for that, there's a great artisan command route list, PHP artisan route list. And by the way, not sure if you're aware, there's a website artisan.page by James Brooks from what I remember, listing all possible artisan commands. So for example, if you run PHP artisan route list, I will do that on my very simple project with just Laravel Breeze, it will give you the list of routes and controllers and names and methods so you would understand what to look for. And there are a few ways to filter those routes. So there are options here. For example, you can do accept vendor. So I will try to run it on my project. So we see 28 routes, mostly from Laravel Breeze and accept vendor shows us 27. So only one route is from vendor. Oh, this one slash up comes from vendor, which is kind of for general health of your application that comes from Laravel core. So yeah, route list is another option to see the routes in the project. And then the second place where you need to look at to understand the full project is database structure. Because think about it, the full functionality of the project is some routes and points. So from there, you understand the functionality, the initial specification of the project. And then those routes and endpoints are for manipulating the data, getting the data, updating the data and stuff like that. So you need to understand the object, what the project is working with. So the data layer, and it is in two places in Laravel projects, in the models and in migrations. So what I personally do is go to models folder and see the list of models, just the names. From here, I understand the objects, the entities the project is working with. But of course, not all the time you can understand the purpose from the name of the model class. So that's why you need the structure from the database level. And for that, of course, you can go to migrations, but this is not really readable, especially if there are multiple changes to the tables. So you cannot clearly see the overview. So for that, you need to generate database schema, visual schema. You can do that with various tools depending on your operating system. But I personally, on my MacBook, I do that with a tool called dbver community, which is free, the community edition. 
and then you have the list of local database and just by clicking on the database it would try to generate the schema so for example I click links letter which is one of the demo projects for one of my courses and you have this visual representation of the models and from here you would understand the internal parts so for example what is an issue and what is a link it is often described by the columns inside and then if we go back to my original idea of specific task to start with you will be already looking at the routes and the database structure from the perspective of the feature you would be exactly working with so you would be looking for your specific route or your specific database table that you need to work with this is much more actionable. So start with action, then go to overview of the full project, and then come back to the specific action to deliver the first task. And the final tip while delivering that first task, if it is possible, try to deliver that task with automated tests right away. That would probably not only impress your teammates and improve the project, but also maybe a start of a habit for other developers or yourself to write tests for at least the new features new upcoming features if you don't have the tests at the moment or if in the project you don't have tests at all like previously zero tests you may start adopting that so if the project allows you to quickly start testing if it's on latest laravel versions you can use best you can use factories you can set up sqlite in phpunit.xml you can quickly create the factories for models that you need for your first feature you can write the first automated tests relatively quickly and that would impress the team even more such initiatives are really welcomed usually again if the project structure allows that if the project is with older code base on earlier laravel version so it would be even a pain to run php artisan test or php unit or pest then you probably shouldn't spend that extra time because still you need to impress not only with the first task but with speed as well but again the basic automated test if the project allows that would not take you that much extra time so i totally advise that and if you're not that familiar with writing tests the most popular course actually on laravel daily is this testing in laravel for beginners so i will link that in the description below what do you think what other pieces of advice you would give for someone just starting the job and trying to analyze the code base let's discuss in the comments below that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos